Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Jason, host of Fighting Words Financial. And in this video today, I'm gonna to be talking about Microvision, the company that trades under the symbol MVIS. Now, if you're looking for an early peak at a penny stock that's set to explode, sorry guys, this video is more than a day late and many dollars short. This stock has seen an incredible run up over the last year. It's up more than 3000% and it has caught the attention of some short sellers really over the last six months. And it's caught my attention too. And there's been at least one person in my comment section who's been hounding me to do a video on uh, on Microvision. So I'm going to do one today. So I wanna see if there's something that justifies the current run up in price and if there's still some growth potential here. Or, you know, is this run up all because of, uh, you know, buyout rumors? Uh, or is Microvision really perhaps just benefiting from some of the market mania due to its loose connection to LiDAR technologies in the EV world and for drones, perhaps? A couple of commenters on my channel and a few folks in my Discord server that's available through my Patreon have asked me to do this uh, video on Microvision over and over and over. Um, to the point where it's it's beyond asking now, they kind of demanded, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway because uh, I really enjoyed my research. But uh, So anyway, I never know what exactly people are expecting when they ask me to make a video on their company. I'm always a little bit fearful that they want me to pump their favorite stock. And uh, to be honest, folks, that just isn't me. So I'm gonna evaluate what this company does what they're working on right now, what the potential for growth is, and I'm gonna get into some revenue numbers and things like that. I'll give you my honest opinion about the stock, and but ultimately, I just wanna provide you enough information for you to make informed decisions on your own. And I'm gonna tell you something upfront. I initially didn't start off with a positive view of this company. Uh, I may have simply been biased on my part because the first thing I saw was the short attacks on this company, but I really dug deep onto the short attacks in the company, and, and I found out that most of them while there's plenty of concerns, um, most of the concerns in the short attacks were actually pretty much invalid. Um, you know, I took a good look at the technology suite as well, and my opinion has changed somewhat. So I'm still far from gung-ho on the stock, and I still have a lot of unanswered questions. And there's gonna be a lot of things in this video that I don't cover, but I'm gonna talk about what I can in this video, and I'll let you guys make the decision on your own. So at this point, I probably should disclose that I don't really have anything negative to say about their actual technology or products. I don't own any Microvision stock, and I don't have plans to buy any of their stock in the near future. Now that statement is not an indictment of Microvision of any sort. Microvision just doesn't fit into my investment plans for the moment. So, and nothing I say right now should be considered as instructions to buy, sell, or hold Microvision or any other security. So let's get started on Microvision. What is Microvision about? Let's take a look at their website first. From their website, Microvision states that they're a company that was founded in 1993, headquartered in Redmond, Washington, which is located about 15 miles east of Seattle, and it's part of that, uh, that technological megaplex there. So Microvision Incorporated is a pioneer in laser beam scanning technologies marketed under the brand Pico P. It's an ultra miniature sensing and laser projection solution based on the laser beam scanning methodology pioneered by the company. Microvision's platform approach for this uh, advanced sensing and display solution means that it can be adapted to a wide array of applications. This technology allows them to create high resolution miniature projection displays and LiDAR sensors. This core technology is the foundation for multiple products in three primary application segments. Display applications such as projection display engines and augmented reality and virtual reality display engines. Sensing applications such as consumer LiDAR sensors and automotive LiDAR sensors. And I should mention probably drone uh, LiDAR sensors as well. And there's also display and sensing applications. And they have this really interesting interactive uh, projection display engine. Uh, that's a very neat technology, but uh, don't, there don't seem to be a ton of people interested in it. By combining their hardware, software, and algorithms with their machine learning capabilities, Microvision claims to provide superior solutions that enhance user experiences. So folks, that's a really long-winded way of saying that they're involved in the world of LiDAR, augmented reality, and virtual reality sensors and interactive display units. They have a number of patented technologies, upwards of 450 either active or pending patents. It should be noted that many of their most important patents are nearing expiration. Microvision's technology suite does have applications in a broad range. 
medical, industrial, professional, and consumer information products. Their patented laser beam scanning technology is used in at least one product that you might have heard of, even though you probably don't think about these types of technologies too often. And I'm talking about Microsoft HoloLens 2. Microvision struck a very important deal with Microsoft to license this technology sometime in February of 2019. The HoloLens 2 has some interesting military augmented reality applications. And to be honest, this deal was probably their best bet at survival for the time. Microvision at that point had long struggled to find a path to profitability and essentially had been struggling since 1993 to find a use for their laser beam scanning technology that could make money. In fact, I looked pretty far back into their financials all the way back to 2005 and found that Microvision has never made a profit. I think what happened to Microvision basically since March of 2020 to present is probably a harbinger of things to come and a story that is likely to be repeated over and over and over as we begin to emerge from the economic troubles of this past year. I think that essentially Microvision was a dead enterprise at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic and they hung a for sale sign out hoping for a buyout sometime in March of 2020. Sure, they had a reasonable deal from Microsoft that involved a royalty, but it's still actually far from clear that Microsoft was committed to Microvision's laser beam scanning technology in the AR and VR projection field. And in the long run, it's not even clear that this technology is going to be the winner in the future. They face some pretty stiff and frankly more dynamic competition from larger and better funded companies like ST Micro and Infineon and a couple of others. They've also had a series of disappointments beginning in late 2019 where a couple of potential customers for their projection technologies bailed out. By first quarter of 2020, they had to have been very afraid of the business environment worsening due to coronavirus. On March 11th, 2020, Microvision CEO Sumit Sharma announced this. We are actively engaged with multiple interested parties to evaluate various opportunities to license our IP as well as other strategic alternatives, strategic alternatives. We have retained Craig Hallam to advise us as we continue these efforts to maximize shareholder value. The Craig Hallam Capital Group is an investment banking firm and some of those strategic alternatives they must have been considering at the time had to include either dismembering their patent portfolio if it indeed had value and putting the entire company up for sale. The closing price for Microvision company stocks on the day of this announcement was 23 cents per share. Now the Craig Hallam Capital Group handled the recent $10 million and $13 million at the market uh, offerings from Microvision, but they didn't retain this firm, Craig Hallam, at the time to handle a secondary stock offering. Not when the price of the stock was 23 cents a share. When they retained Craig Hallam, they essentially hung a for sale sign out on their window. They were looking to either sell part of their patent portfolio or looking to be acquired someone outright by someone interested in their technology. The logical assumption here would be that someone they had a licensing agreement with would be the likely buyer of the company. Someone like Microsoft, perhaps. For a couple of reasons, this is possible and, and maybe even likely. Microsoft has made some interesting acquisitions in the last year, and they have almost $140 billion in cash just sitting around gathering dust. Microsoft, and logically some other company, may also be infringing on one or more of Microvision's patents already, and it just makes sense that buying the company outright may be more efficient than going through patent litigation. But there are a couple of reasons to think that the potential dance partner for Microvision isn't Microsoft at all. Microsoft in the past few years has already hired away a bunch of the top talent from Microvision. HoloLens 2 is a pretty low volume product with a max market of maybe 100,000 units per year. And in a lot of ways, it's already close to being obsolete and Microsoft may be considering other technological options for the future. There could be other interested parties besides Microsoft though. And I think it's pretty obvious that Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, and many, many other companies are looking to strengthen their LiDAR, AR, and VR capabilities as they make a push into that space. And Microvision's patent portfolio, or a portion of it, may be what they're looking for. That patent portfolio was attacked by Hindenburg Research, uh, you know, famous short sellers in a series of tweets last year. Now, notably, Hindenburg Research has not released a full report like they did in the case when they dismantled Nikola Motors. I did take a look at the series of tweets and I've taken a real good hard look at the patents that Microvision holds. And I have to say this, I have concerns about Microvision, but they aren't the same concerns that Hindenburg voiced. 
And while I thoroughly enjoyed the takedown of Nicola that Hindenburg executed, there are a couple of technical errors in that Nicola report that led me to believe that while Hindenburg may be very good at forensic accounting and very good at developing sources from former employees, they don't often get the best technical advice when writing their short reports. In the case of Microvision, however, they only anonymously quoted a patent attorney in a tweet that alleged that Microvision's patents were basically worthless. But they never released a full report of their findings, and they really didn't attempt to build a solid case against the company. And uh, after looking at their technology portfolio myself, I feel that Hindenburg Research was either being deliberately disingenuous or they got some really bad advice. So let me give you my opinion now on what has happened since March 11th of 2020 when Microvision's stock price was just 23 cents per share and they hired Craig Hallam Capital Group. At the time, Microvision had an Altman Z-score of negative 126.67. So the Z-score, the Altman Z-score is a measure of bankruptcy risk. If let's say Apple is at one end of the scale and their score is a positive 4.49 at the time, which basically represents an extreme unlikelihood of bankruptcy, you can just imagine that the that Microvision sitting at the very other end of that scale with a Z-score of negative 126.67 represents an extreme risk of bankruptcy. I think that in March of 2020, Microvision was essentially done as an enterprise. They hung that for sale sign out on a shingle when they retained Craig Hallam Capital Group and they were shopping for a buyer. I don't think you know, Microvision or anyone else expected what happened. In the middle of a pandemic, the market took off on the back of stimulus-related liquidity measures. Microvision stock shot up when they got caught up in the wave of investor enthusiasm for everything tech and because several EV companies were looking into LiDAR for autonomous driving applications. By August, there were also some leaks indicating that Microsoft may be interested in a buyout. These leaks to date are still unsubstantiated reports to a large degree, but the price of Microvision continued to shoot up. So Microvision at this point, let's say you know beginning of November, like so many other companies in 2020 that I could name here, BioNano and of course uh, Nano Dimensions, they did not waste the opportunity to go back to markets to take advantage of their high price to dilute and add cash to the balance sheet with a secondary offering of stock. If the stock price had remained somewhat stable, having more cash in the bank may have actually made them a more attractive buyout candidate. But even after two rounds of dilution and very little other substantial news, the price has shot through the roof on rumors to more than $20 per share, increasing their market cap to more than three and a half billion. It is entirely possible that the steep rise of the stock price has actually delayed or even killed the possibility of a buyout anytime soon. It may be that the potential buyers are now unwilling to pay three and a half billion uh, for the technology that this company has. Buyouts are rarely, if ever, done at a price below market value. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it's a heck of a lot less likely than it was back in August of 2020. It could also be the case that whoever's looking at buying them out has pockets that are so deep that they don't care about an extra couple billion here or there. And I'm saying if you know Google is looking at them, if Apple is looking at them, or Facebook or someone like that, they don't care about an extra one or two billion dollars. They've got plenty of cash on hand. So I think that it's pretty likely that what we're going to see next from Microvision is more dilution. They're going to raise more cash. They will strike while the iron is hot and try to squeeze as much cash from this moment in the sun as they can. The questions that I have, and I have many of them, but one of them is how much can be raised from secondary offerings before investor enthusiasm dims? Are they going to plow the money back into the company and research, hoping that after 27 years, they're magically going to find a way to turn a profit? Are they still actively seeking a buyout at this point? Or does management believe that Microvision has long been too far ahead of the technology adoption curve for profitability, but that now, now is their moment and their time for profitability. Now is the time for their technologies to see mass adoption. And is this strategy to raise capital, to give them space, finally going to give them the what they need to succeed? I don't have the answers for these questions right now, but I do know that with more cash in the bank, Microvision has some breathing room and they might not have to say yes to a buyout offer now. I think that a lot of small public technology companies that had near-death experiences in 2020 
were able to stay alive with this strategy of taking advantage of investor enthusiasm for all things tech, and especially anything that was even peripherally attached to, uh, to electric vehicles. What happens next with Microvision, I think is anyone's guess, but buyout, dismemberment of their patent portfolio, or bankruptcy, I think are all still on the table. But honestly, based on a recent appointment of Judy Curran, a former senior executive of Ford Motor Company to the board of directors, and some announcements regarding uh, automotive LiDAR, it looks like Microvision may actually think that their moment in the sun has arrived. Let me know what you think about Microvision in the comments below. I'm genuinely interested and curious to hear your reasons if you're enthusiastic about this stock. Like I said before, guys, I'm not planning to add this to my portfolio. I, I think that the price has far outrun the value of the patent portfolio at this point. I know a lot of people might disagree with that, but let me know what your comments are uh, below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.